Micronauts Volume 4 is strange, but strange in the way that Zardoz is strange. Like, it's really strange, so you appreciate it for being strange, but at the same time, you're like, is it just strange because maybe it's half-baked and they were all thoroughly wasted when they made it? But I also like it. That's how I feel about Micronauts Issue Number Four. For starters, the cover's great. I mean, you gotta love that. I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, I do know what's going on because I read it, but you don't. You have no idea what's going on. All that you know is that the dude with the beard is being shot in the face with lasers, and so are the robots as they're being melted. It's pretty par for the course for the Micronauts, really. Micronauts, the new voyages, number four from January 1985. Hey, look, there's the Micronauts. They're all weird. We have Arc. Acro year, Marionette, the last royal blood of a rich and ancient civilization. She has seen it die. Ah, she's got awesome hair. Arcturus, the thousand year old wanderer. Like, you know, you're running out right now to buy this issue because it's already awesome. And look, you get a free t shirt, maybe. I don't know. Slow Death on the Proving Ground, which is like the most out of touch title ever. Anyway, this book is really nuts. Like, if the other ones are all strange. Number three is my favorite so far. Number three is really good. And you got to read three if you have even, if you have any hopes of understanding like 4% of what's going on in this book. So we, we have the uh, Micronauts here in their skin tight body armor, whatever suits, trapped on a planet with a laser atmosphere. I'm not just making this up. They made it up. That's why it's awesome. A laser atmosphere. Look, they're ducking from the lasers, but Bug is so incredibly brave or stupid that he sticks his hand up to test if it's a laser like, dangerous lasers are just harmless light. Thankfully for him, it's just harmless light. And somewhere along the line, somewhere along the way, he lost his hand, by the way, but I'm sure he'll grow or find another one. Those are some very impractical boots, but at least she has matching gloves. I think that's, that's important. So their robot friends are on another part of the planet, and they're trying to save them, but they're also dodging the laser atmosphere they hide behind a mountain range, only to discover that the mountain range is made of crystal and actually amplifies the laser atmosphere. You following along? This is a great series. You should be reading this right now. Oh no, they're being melted! Let's go on Amazon and buy new robots, whatever. I'm fairly confident they spent more time drawing her breasts and her uh, Farrah Fawcett hair than they did actually storyboarding the coherent storytelling. But that's okay, we can forgive them. It's the 70s. It's not, but it's close enough. So Mary looks at this screen here on, on the, uh, whatever, the, the, you know, the super futuristic space console and apparently passes out. They're, this isn't really clear as to why, but that's okay. So he, he's not sure either. Anyway, he looks at the screen and passes out. So we have our two main characters both passed out and then somehow they reappear inside a period drama. So, so we've just gone from Zardoz to Downton's Abbey within like two panels and everybody's thoroughly confused but somehow you can still kind of make out what's going on. If you've seen a lot of movies from the 70s, you, you should probably be, be able to figure this out. If you were born after 2000, you're, well, there's no way you're actually watching this. Uh, we assume this dude here is Arc... What's that guy's name again? Beard guy. Arcturus. I was gonna, I'm just going to call him Kurt Russell from The Thing. So we assume that Kurt Russell shaved his beard and he's, da beard and he's dancing with, uh, with this girl. But who is that girl over there with the really heavy inks? It's, it's very dramatic. And we've got some serious 70s hair. It's just like, this is like one of those party scenes at a Scooby-Doo where they're all high as a kite. They're using their dancing to control the robots battling the Micronauts on the spaceship while Groot Poop Emoji Alien Queen shoots them with laser eyes. I, I, I actually didn't know he had laser eyes. In fact, I'm not sure that he actually, he even knew he had laser eyes, but Groot Poop Emoji Alien Queen uh, grows Wolverine claws and actually credits Wolverine, so that's nice of him. And we're all really super confused as to who the Micronauts are battling here. And then it cuts back to the, the uh, period drama where, where um, Kurt Russell and uh, Farrah Fawcett are about to make out in the period drama, but they somehow flash back to the future, and 
So now, so yeah, the, so now they're back, back in the future. Is, is, is this the plot from Overboard? I'm, I'm actually a little confused. So we've got like these weird alien. There's Iron Man wearing a Santa's cap, and I don't know. I really have no idea what actually happens in this comic book. book co ugh, comic book. I'll cut that part out in editing. I won't. I really sixty cents. That's incredible. I really have no idea what's actually going on in this comic book, but I love it, and so do you. You really got to read this one first, though. You have to at least understand that they're on a planet with a laser atmosphere. Wrap your mind around that one. A laser atmosphere. That's a place I want to go for vacation.